For TraderInsight.com, I'm Adrian Manns, and it's time for your daily dose of the doctor. Yesterday, I said we would cover conditional orders today, and true to my word, we're going to do that. Let's take a look at one of the trades that we did in the first hour trading pit this morning. This was MKC, McCormick & Company, Incorporated. As you can see here, I've got lines drawn on this trade. This is also a plan trade, so it was on the trading plan, and we've got these additional orders, these secondaries, if you will, and we're going to cover these in great detail at boot camp. So if you don't quite understand them yet, don't worry about it. You're going to get a, a full briefing on how to set up secondary order entries. But uh, let's just take a look at the mechanics behind the conditional order execution for right now. So 94.17 was overhead resistance yesterday. 94.12 was today's first resistance pivot. What I want to see happen is a move up to 94.17 that then reverses down through 94.12 and gets me short just below that pivot line and targets the $93.76 pivot. And this is all possible using conditional orders. Let's take a look at how we do this in Realtek. Your software, if you don't use Realtek, if you're using something else, it'll vary, but it's going to be a very similar process to what I'm doing here. What we're looking at is the order entry montage as it's presented in Realtek. This has level two data, ticker data, bunch of data on what the stock's done this morning and it's got an order entry screen at the bottom. Notice I've ticked conditional order. I say sell short and we get this screen price time trigger. That's what we want. We want a trigger that occurs based on a price. That price is going to be $94.17. 94.17 is the price that has to tick before anything else happens. Then we come down and we're going to change this limit order to a stop limit. And the reason for that is where we wanted to get in was at $94.11, say. If 94.17 prints, if we just use a limit order, then what would happen is we would immediately have a sell short 94.11 order out there if 94.17 printed. And that's not really what we want to have happen. What we want to see is 94.17 prints, then we get a stop limit order, and we need to see price get down to $94.11 and then we're going to accept a fill down to $94.07. So it's got to get just below that pivot line and when it does get a short with a few pennies of slippage at the worst. Now you see why I did the stop limit instead of the limit. If 94.17 had printed and we allowed the software to immediately sell a short with a worst price of 94.11 then we would have been short on the 9417 print and that stock might have kept moving up. So what we want to see happen is the overhead resistance gets touched, then we get to move down through our second criteria which is a violation of that pivot line and once that happens then we want to get short with a stop at 9411 and a worst case fill at 9407. So then we place that order. Once that order is in we can put the rest of the order together now we say buy MKC instead of price time trigger. We're going to use an order trigger. Adjust the dependent volume. Select your live order. Right? We want this order. If MKC gets up above 94.17, then sell short. Worst case scenario, 94.07. If it hits 94.11, use the actual trade volume so we don't get an overfill on the way out. Right? What if you wanted 1,000 shares on the short side, but you only got filled 600? then delete the order if it never triggered and in this case let's set up our stop loss so we'll do a uh, we'll do a stop on this one as a stop market order and if price gets up above that 9417 level let's say up to $94.21 just get us out get us out using a market order and then just check that over make sure everything's right place the order then we say buy it again and this time, we're going to do the exact same thing, but for our profit. So we're going to select our fill, adjust the dependent volume, delete the dependent order if it never triggered. And this time, let's use a stop limit order and say if we get down to our target at $93.76, then get us out. And the worst case scenario that we want to have as a fill is $93 and let's say 81 cents. So we'll take a nickel slip on the way out because we think it's going to bump around that price. So we don't want to use a market order and get, get some kind of a stray fill. Say place the order. 
once that order's in, you're all set to go. If MKC moves up to $94.17, a move back down through 94.12 is going to fill us on the way through 94.11, and we're going to get out at $93.76. So that's what we were doing in the room this morning, if you were wondering as we were talking about setting these things up. And it's just the same scenario for each one of the additional lines that we've got on our chart. So when the stock moves down through the central pivot, and we want to short right at that 93.76 line or right below that, and we want to target 93.51, that's just another conditional order. When it comes up above 93.91 and trades back down through, and we want to target 93.51 again, same thing, just another conditional order. You can layer as many of those out there as you want, and your trading software will take care of them for you. Just do yourself a favor and don't forget they're there. And remember to cancel all those orders before the end of the trading day if they haven't triggered. So I hope that clears up conditional orders a little bit. If you have any questions, shoot me an email, adrian at traderinsight.com. I hope you had a great trading day today and an even better one on deck for tomorrow. The best trader education anywhere, only from traderinsight.com.